everybody. Welcome back to Soul Speak with Jenny Israel. You're here for your Soul Tribe Saturday episode for December 12th. And I have two very, very special ladies here with me today who I consider my my inner sanctum. Um, so we're going to have a talk today um, about a few different things. I think that these ladies are awesome for you guys to hear uh, tell their story because they both came from very similar backgrounds and have similar ascension stories and how they ended up in the, the spiritual world of nature's energetics and yoga and holistic healing and all of the above. So this is kind of springing off of what I have been talking about um, for the last couple of weeks as far as where we are at right now, not just on a spiritual path, but also inside of our bodies, inside of our emotional space, inside of our mental space, and how we're all handling this. We also happen to be um, right smack in the middle of our eclipse season at this point. Actually, we're, we're a little closer now to the, um, well, this past week, I should say. This past week, we have been straddling the line between the portals of the lunar eclipse and the solar eclipse. The solar eclipse is coming up um, this coming Monday, the 14th, and it's a new beginning, I think, that we're all really looking forward to. Um, but there's a lot of stimulation going on right now, a whole lot. And it's it stays within the themes that we've already been discussing. There's been a lot of identity development. There's been a lot of death and release um, in order to make space for this rebirth, this Phoenix rising energy that just seems to come in stronger and stronger all the time. We have a lot of fire in the sky right now. We're, you know, experiencing um, the, the fallout from some pretty major solar storms and solar flares, the the Schumann's resonance on the earth spiking and going all over the place. So adrenals have been a really big theme. <clears throat> and what's interesting about the adrenals is that they, they hook into all different areas of the body, depending on what your specific trigger is. So when we look at it from the endocrine system and the, the chakra system, when we look at it from that energy perspective, the adrenals are very stimulated by the root chakra. And root chakra is all about our, our basic needs for survival to make us feel safe and supported. However, a lot of the themes inside of what triggers our safety and support structures actually lives inside the sacral chakra because we're talking about self-worth, self-love, deservedness, all of those things. So we've got sacral playing in there. Then we have solar plexus because that's where the adrenals actually live. And so we've got a lot of those earthbound chakras all kind of working together. But because of the way the adrenals are tapped into our endocrine system, the entire channel gets affected. Because anybody who's had a, any level of adrena, adrenal fatigue knows one of the worst symptoms is chronic fatigue and brain fog, the, the lack of mental clarity, the lack of the ability to really pull your mind together. And so here we have some upper mental realms happening as well. Now, at the base of all of these struggles, it's basically the, the challenge of our human self to move into a place of enough surrender that we can move our power over into our divinity. It is truly the let go and let God. And so within this message and within this topic, these two women are so perfect to be delivering these messages because they both were put into a position where they had to do this and have faith that the, the path that they were choosing, which was very different from what where they were, that they were going to succeed and that this is where their soul was being led. So with that being said, I want to introduce Amy Ippolito 
Amy, just wave <coughs> to the camera. We're, we're doing this podcast is also available on the YouTube channel, um, Soul Speak with Jenny Israel. And we do have some visuals. The, the ladies are also going to describe um, the things that they're talking about, but there are going to be some visuals if you want to pop over to the YouTube uh, video to see the crystals and things and see their beautiful faces um, mm -hmm. and, and just kind of see the other things that we're talking about instead of just listening. Um, and then we have Roseanne Ferriolo. Now, Roseanne Ferriolo is the, the owner of Simplicity Yoga in Kings Park. And Simplicity Yoga is the home of the Crystal Butterfly, um, which is Amy's brainchild. Now, they both are energy healers. They are both part of my Seraphim Blueprint Angel Tribe. And they have lots and lots of other gifts as well. So we're going to start out by allowing each of them to give a little bit of their story on how they got to where they are and then how how they actually came together to be what is coming 2021, the Ascension Sisters, um, <laughs> and what that's going to look like. So why don't we start, uh, Roseanne, if you don't mind starting, just giving a little bit of a background of how you got to where you are now. Okay, sure. Um, thanks so much. And thanks for having us on today, Jenny. Um, it's always so wonderful to be with you uh, and this tribe. Um, I was a high school teacher uh, for uh, for about 10 years and I had other, I was working at night also and just a really crazy time of life where um, I was, be, I had a long commute at the time and I remember like sitting in my car, driving to work and being totally out of breath, just sitting in the car, like in the uh, driving and thinking this is not normal. Like I'm not running. I am not like trying to escape danger. Why is my heart racing? Why am I out of breath? And um, I had always been like a big gym person and I knew that I needed that physical activity in order to help counter stress, but something was so incredibly missing. Um, when I started to practice yoga, it felt so much different from anything else that I had ever done. But I, um, I was a teacher in a Catholic school for a long time and that really did um, affect my journey. I had always been very spiritual. I always went to church and I always found a lot of um, solace in spirituality, but I still was like missing something that was helping me to plug back into the system. And when I say that, I, I mean like the system that we come from, like all of, our place in the greater order of the universe. And so it became this kind of, um, I don't know, nat natural next step that all of the things that had been feeding me, um, but not completely kind of formed this new path that I started to chase down. So I started practicing yoga and the idea of working with my body and with my body's natural desire to exist in a state of not being stressed out where you're sitting perfectly still and plugging back into if my if I'm existing in a place where I feel really far away from my center, really far away from being balanced. So how do I get my physical body and my spiritual body to um, come together in a place that the imbalance doesn't seem so great that it's overwhelming. So uh, I started practicing yoga more regularly and one thing kind of led to another and I ended up leaving my teaching career and opening up the studio about 11 years ago and then I started to get into energy healing and into the world of what we you know refer to as nature's energetics and understanding that the more you plug back into that system, that you're not just kind of praying from a place of being so outside of the system, that no imbalance can be so great that you don't feel like you're just on one end of the spectrum or the other, mm -hmm. right? That you're not broken ever, that you're not so beyond help. You're just in a place where your understanding of where you are may be far away from what healing feels like, but the more tools that you have at your disposal to help you plug back in to that system that you come from, then you really start to open up this world where you have so much at your disposal, that the energy that's available to us, not only in things like the crystals and, and, our, and Reiki and meditation and oils and all of that, 
but that you are trying to tune in in the way where you see, well, the vibration of my being in this moment might match something that I also recognize now on this path of like, well, I know that if I start practicing yoga and combine that with meditation and crystals, that my imbalance all of a sudden is not something that's really overwhelming to me. It's just uh, my moment of where I am in self-study as far as like, okay, life is always going to be happening around us. And so what can we do in order to plug back in, in a way that makes sense for us, that we find that sense of calm. And then when I started to work with Amy doing uh, crystal workshops at the studio, it was such a wonderful piece of the puzzle that I was like, this was something that was missing as far as a physical anchor in the practice right? To be able to do energy healing, but to find something that is a literal touchstone that you put on the body, that you realize that the vibration of what is feeling off in me somehow resonates with the vibration of something that came from nature that God also made, that when I reconnect to that vibration, all of a sudden I can plug back in in a way that seems so much more tangible. Because at times, because we're human and we live in this physical world, we need the physical um, touchstones, the things that can literally, uh, we can grab onto and put on our bodies and look to and say, okay, well, I know I need this today. And even that is like revelatory when you're in a place of real stress and then coming out of that, that you have this emotion. And then all of a sudden you look and say, okay, well, what do I really need today? What, what vibration do I, am I after in this moment? And you say, okay, well, I need this. I know that there's something in me that recognizes that I need this stone and I want to put it by my heart today. And then I'm going to meditate and breathe and allow myself to come back to that sense of balance. And so the more we um, encourage each other, teach each other. Um, I love that we're still teaching, you know, I mean, I were both teachers in our, in our former life um, that you come to a place where you're not looking outside of yourself for these answers, that's not what it is, is that you've looked so deeply inside of yourself that you've recognized the vibration that you need to connect with. And so you do that in so many different ways. And, and to understand that we're not just here on an island also, you know, we are going in to find the answers, but then we also need, because we're all connected, because we're all energy and everything is one, that we need so often to go to the vibration of another human that will help us reconnect to where we need to be in that moment. Thank you for um, making that connection because I think that, you know, those of us who, who are on this path become very hypersensitive around looking outside of ourselves, right? It's like, it becomes this, this thing that we become very judgmental. It's like, oh, I'm, there I go again. I'm looking outside of myself for the mm -hmm. answers. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that that's a very important point to distinguish that a lot of the time what we're reaching out for is in a direct response to something that's happened inside. And mm -hmm. I think that that's, you know, well, there's no better time to be talking about nature's energetics. And, and I wanted to kind of explain a little bit like, okay, so nature's energetics, these are the things that God and mother earth has produced on a vibrational level for our unity and healing purposes. Okay. So we're talking about herbs. We're talking about flowers. We're talking about essences. We're talking about essential oils. We're talking about crystals and minerals and, you know, um, even color, sound. I mean, these are all natural things that are in our world that our senses take in in one way or another. And so the, the need for us, like Roseanne was just saying, to actually connect physically with something is becoming more and more powerful because we're going inside and we're realizing, okay, my Xanax isn't working anymore. My, you know, like that glass of wine at night is, is not necessarily anchoring me or making me relax. I don't feel the same way that I do about that, that I did, you know, three months ago or, you know, and this need to find a tribe, this need to be in a social environment with other like-minded people, souls that you can vibrate on and be totally naked and vulnerable with, because this vulnerability Everyone's searching for this, 
inside of themselves, like this desire to be authentic and this desire to be holy and vulnerably themselves and not really sure how to go about that because the ego is firing off in every direction and saying, don't you dare, like, don't you dare expose yourself in that way because you're just going to get hurt. And what we're finding is though, that the desire to have this is starting to outweigh the fear-based vibration inside of our bodies and moving in this direction of finding our true selves and our true calling and you know, they, they say that true courage is not obliterating your fear. It's feeling the fear and doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to let Amy talk because that's basically the space that she was in for like the first year of this path. And, you know, it, I think we all still struggle with it because we're coming up with new, new things are being challenged, are challenging us all the time. But, you know, this, this idea of like, this is something totally new, but I can't deny the the resonance that I have with this and the soul calling that I have for this. Absolutely. I really um, resonate with your what you're saying because so much of my life was spent just chasing, chasing, chasing and looking outside of myself for fulfillment. And, you know, is it going to be in the eyes of motherhood? Is it going to be with marriage? Is it going to be with my career? And, you know, all of the things that society puts on us to you know, make you happy, quote unquote, right? And, and the paths that you're, you're supposed to be on. Um, and I was on that teaching path for 28 years and I taught North Carolina, I taught special education, I taught elementary education, I taught every grade level you could teach from preschool to high school. And my last couple of years of teaching, the stress and the anxiety of trying to perform and please and be all things to all people and not knowing I was an empath and the amount of emotional taxation was on my system for people needing something from me, whether it was families or students or colleagues. There was just so much stress and so much pressure that um, my body started to really break down. And I ended up contracting shingles three times in a two year time span. I had gastrointestinal issues that were horrible and really saw, trying to seek out doctors. I was just going to doctors, constantly going to doctors all the time and appointments and therapies and medications. And I didn't want to do any of that. And I had started very early on with essential oils and really enjoying the benefits of having some kind of a tool in my toolbox to reach for that can interrupt whatever pattern I was feeling, whether it was anxiety or emotions or um, too much in my head, overthinking or feeling like depressed, you know, because why me? I'm so young. Why am I having all these issues and why am I so sick? So I saw it, um, Jenny and I actually know each other through a mutual uh, relationship. Our, our, her nephew and my son are very good friends and we met at a party and I was telling her about what I was going through. And she's like, oh, you need to come see me for some energy healing because I really think I know what you need and, and I'll have you right down the rabbit hole. And sure enough, it was funny because right around that time I had uh, purchased from Amazon, <laughs> shame, shame, shame on me, a crystal. Um, and I, it was a, a labradorite palm stone. And I looked at, I just couldn't believe the beauty of it. Yeah, here's one, I'm wearing one. I'm always wearing one, I'm wearing yeah. a ring. Um, this, this palm stone had like all these crazy light refractions. I saw faces in it. I was like, what is, why do I feel so good when I hold it at night? I would hold it while I was watching TV and it just always needed to be around me. So that led to another crystal and another crystal. And if you talk to my husband, you'll know it was like a crystal obsession and books and reading. And that after coming to Jenny and being activated to see that what I'm an empath and I have all of these things that are um, normal, like I was so normalized to know that and recognize that the way I am is a good thing. I, being an emotional person, being, you know, a person who helps people, this is just my, my whole life and this quest to try to find balance is I, I realized it was within and I needed to stop going outside and go within but these tools were wonderful to help me so that led to Reiki certification with Lisa Wolfson and Rockville Center amazing teacher um, I did all the levels of Reiki I just kept going like then I started to become a crystal certified healer my friend Deborah Bella also took those classes and then it just became this thing that I couldn't deny that this is my next path. But how am I going to mitigate this with the teaching path that I was 
quote unquote supposed to be on. I have a master's degree and I, I have to do this. So with the energy work and the meditation and the yoga, because I've been coming to her studio and she's been such a, a, a release of all of my stress by coming to, to yoga, that was part of my healing. Um, you know, it became a thing that I can really say was the path I had no other way to go but down that path. So that has been the, the Seraphim Blueprint really helped me recognize that. And we just, you know, come January, I was like, how about I do a workshop at your, at your uh, studio? And she's like, figure it out, let's do it. And at the time, the work situation was so stressful, I had to make a decision. And by the springtime, I knew that I needed to, I needed to leave that job and take a leap of faith, a wonderful husband who said, you know, you have to do what you need to do for your, your best self and ended up um, leaving the teaching profession. And ironically, now we're teaching children about crystals. We're teaching uh, teenagers are coming from the, I was on a high school, my last job, and the kids are coming from the high school. It's just like a place that people are coming to because they need it. And they're coming in with such stress and anxiety and fear about what's coming, the uncertainty. And we're, we're helping people now because we're in alignment with what we really felt we needed to do. And adults too. I mean, it's wonderful that the kids, I wish that I knew, you know, we always say that I wish I knew then what I've learned now along the way, but to be introduced to all of this and the bigger, um, like we were talking about plugging back into the system that we come from and all of the things that are available to us that shouldn't be kept a secret, yeah. you know, that yeah. should be part of the curriculum of being a human being from when you're born. These things should be introduced to you as all of the gifts that God gave you also to, for success, to set you up for success in this life that, yeah, we're here to have experiences and they're not all going to be pleasant. So when we get into those places where we are taxed as a human being and our spirit is tested and our body is tested and our mind is tested, you're not here alone. There's so much that's available to you. And imagine if everything that we set people up from birth in that way of like, okay, well, here are the things that you do should you find yourself in this situation so that we don't become adults who are like, okay, the bottle of wine at night is not working. And the gallon of coffee yeah, in the morning. Yeah, the coffee in the morning. There's that great meme of the, the um, coffee cup handing the baton like in a race, you know, to the wine, at, you know, yeah. like, and that's yeah. like what most people are or on right now. Addiction. Or food, food addiction. That was yeah. a big thing for me too, is just always trying to feed and quell the, the desires or the fears and the emotions with food. So food was a really big one. It was, I became a yo-yo dieter from the time I was 20, too, till, you know, recently just chasing that body image or that, you know, control, having the control. And I think the biggest thing with leaving teaching and doing this is I had to completely surrender and allow the universe to pave the way and have the path made clear for me because I didn't know how I was going to be making money. Really. I didn't have a plan. I just knew I had to stay in alignment with my truth and my spirit and what my spirit was telling me. So, um, yeah. And now I say we, we live in crystal fairy wonderland because <laughs> we, we get to be with all of these. Fairy wonderland. I, know, I don't know what is. Yeah. Right? These, these crystals are just, they speak to your soul. And I, when people come into the shop, we tell them, you know, just trust your intuition. Just like you don't know what to eat for the day. You kind of get a feeling of what you think you need to have. Same thing. You just go into a shop and you just explore and see what calls you then read the little information card we provide well that's the thing it's like this this um balance between finding things outside of ourselves but intuiting that from within right so like you i always think about this with food also and and my sister who's a you know a nutritionist and health counselor you guys know her um, she's amazing always talks about the idea that you can figure out what you want if you allow yourself to be in that place where you're trying to connect, to plug in. So when you realize that, okay, I, I am going outside of myself to enjoy the bounty of what's been given, provided for us to find balance, which is what, you know, we throw that term around a lot. That's the place where you feel good, where you feel connected. That's your true North, your, your happy place, the place where you recognize yourself as the good, great, you know, version of yourself that, you just are enjoying life. 
but so when we are and we're always in need you know every day we wake up we need something we need to eat we need to you know get dressed and figure out what the day is going to be like if it starts off with that moment of knowing like okay i need to plug in plug into myself but to my mm -hmm. high self to my intuition for the day every decision you make is different then and then you reach for certain things that are fitting into the puzzle of where your balance is going to be, find its best, you know, equilibrium that day. So I might need, you know, carnelian that day because it was going on in my root and I need to really ground myself and I need a different kind of yoga that day because if we're too much, you know, this is what I see a lot now uh, in, in yoga classes too. People are struggling right now in this moment with either being too grounded, too stuck in their lower chakras, just in the earth experience and really suffering because if you're just here, then, then there's nothing else, right? And there's no connection to spirit or trying so hard to figure out the bigger picture of things that they're meditating and praying and doing all of these spiritual practices for 90% of their time and totally neglecting the fact that we've incarnated for a reason to learn lessons. So that's imbalanced. And so what do we need? We need more than anything to, to open the heart, to bridge the, the, the body and the, and the spirit and figure out, okay, this is, you know, we're going to go through these flexes. And there are times when, you know, we'll notice, and the more you tune in and plug into your intuition, you can figure this out. Am I in a place of imbalance right now? Because I'm so rooted in my physical experience. All I want is to, you know, either numb out of this physical experience with food or at drugs or alcohol or whatever or sex or whatever people use to just be in this physical body Amazon. too much Amazon <laughs> <laughs> and then the next day you're like what did I buy what's going on <laughs> but um, or you're you're so neglecting your physical experience and all you're doing is meditating and seeking out one energy healer after another and not understanding why it's still not working out for you all I'm doing is all these spiritual that. practices <laughs> yeah and then you're that. suffering so literally like my upper chakras were pulling away from my lower chakras i would go to jenny and she'd be like what oh, you're like cut in half what's going on mm -hmm. because i wasn't doing enough like physical exercise and energy and grounding my energy into the earth because i was reading a book of day to educate myself and i'm very much in that respect i love the science of the crystals like you know the crystalline structure of a crystal vibrates at a place where you know, your body can read that energy and it can create balance within the system. This blew my mind. I couldn't believe that the science of the crystals, we have so many people that come into the shop that are just stressed or their children are stressed and the children mm -hmm. have anxiety and they don't want to go to school or they, they have the remote learning and they, they don't have the socialization. Yeah. And and when you look, we, we guide them always to the little light. Yeah, look at the so this is if you're on YouTube, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you're on YouTube and think about this. So I know you're just going to say this and I'll let Amy talk. She's the crystal expert, but so there's a not. high, well, I hang out with her a lot, <laughs> so you can't not learn, but um, think of this. This is um, one of the highest naturally occurring contents of lithium, right? So this, when we say that nature is really setting you up for success, it's not saying you'll never be stressed, but it's saying if you can tune in and understand that there's there's something to help bring you back to balance, right? I remember reading years and years ago that um, when the sun sets, it actually emits lithium into the atmosphere to calm the body, right? You're supposed to be preparing for nighttime, calming down. And so you work with nature and your body um, can get exactly what it needs. Imagine, we tell people that, that there's lithium in here. You don't need to take the Xanax, mm -hmm. but maybe hold some lipidolite in your hands okay, and put them in your bath. In and put them, yeah. or, uh, I know a lot of women, we put them in the bra because yeah. it's a safe spot, you know, unless you don't have underwire, <laughs> but you have oh. always falling out, but it's, it's like a touchstone, you know, and a reminder, we have bracelets and things like that, that, you know, wearable crystals are ideal because then you can have it on your body. You have something, you have to give a speech and you have a throat chakra stone, like, um, kyanite pendant on your neck and, and it helps with your communication because it opens up that that chakra so when we started plugging into the science of the colors of the crystals and how they aligned with the colors of the chakra system which Roseanne always says is the we have the, the main seven chakras with the their energetic 
nerve tangling. Oh, I know you always <laughs> have the way that you <laughs> explain it so much better than me. But, but no, it's just because people, when you give people, which I, I appreciate uh, as somebody who's also always wanting to know the why and learning and can't read enough about it, that you explain to people that the chakras, this is not just, you know, hippie woo woo nonsense that we're talking about. These are bioenergetic spheres of activity that emanate from the major nerve ganglia of the spine. And, so and much better than I do. <laughs> well, I mean, this is what we talk about inside of intuition development that people automatically, it's like, oh, well, that's my third eye. Well, no, it's not. It's literally every single part of the endocrine system plugs into every single chakra of the body. And so the endocrine system, the central nervous system, these they're, they are integrated together and inside of what we consider our little energy battery packs in each you know part of the body which is are the chakras there is color there is vibration there is emotional sense mental sense physical sense i mean they're literally running the so extra sensory and and that sensory. part yeah and so it, it is really important to understand and i mean those of you who have been listening to me for a while know like this is where i totally get off like the the <laughs> the the combination of science and spirit yes. like this is this is what the age of aquarius is about like this is where we come into unity understanding that there is absolutely zero separation between mm -hmm. science and spirit and that they are part and parcel to one another and that the very mm -hmm. design of our human vessel is is inside of that relationship, inside of the relationship between our biology, our physiology, and our spirituality. Like it's all this, it's all together, all working together. In the quantum fields, right? So I'd, I'd like to talk about like that horizon line, like we were totally, you know, Roseanne started to talk about, like, we, we, we think about the, the heart chakra is basically right smack in the middle. It's, it's the, there's three above and three below. So our, our heart really is the horizon line mm -hmm. of the upper chakras having the spiritual experience and the lower chakras having our human experience. And then the heart being the place where those two things merge together mm -hmm. and, how, you know, talking about how we're being stimulated right now, especially inside of that, the, that adrenal function, which, you know, then throws off the rest of the endocrine system. I mean, I, I can't right. even tell you how many people are probably tuned in right now that are literally in the midst of struggling with chronic adrenal fatigue like mm -hmm. right now in this moment. And so what does that look like? I know because I'm, I, you know, like this is something that I've been in before in my history, but I'm back in it again this year, you know, my, my body trying to adjust to constantly being leveled up, which is happening inside of that solar plexus, right? It's like, oh, the new level of personal power. Oh, now there's a new level of personal power. Oh, no, no, it's a different day. Now you're going to get blasted with this. It's like, you're constantly being leveled up right now. Everybody is. It doesn't matter what line of work you're in. It doesn't matter where you are on your spiritual path. We are all mm -hmm. being leveled up. And so this pressure inside of our physical systems, the nervous mm -hmm. system, the endocrine system. It's like at any given moment during the day, your heart could be pounding out of your chest and then you're literally laying on the floor because you can't get up, you know? So, <laughs> you know, Sounds trying to, <laughs> trying to figure out like where you're at in that moment and, and going back to some of the things that you guys already touched on, it was like, okay, first thing in the morning, like, what do I need to start my day? standing in front of your closet and like, what color am I today? Like, what color mm -hmm. do I need to put on my body? Starting with that vibration, you know, am I going to start my day with a tarot card pool? Am I going to start my day, you know, with or 15 Oracle deck? Right. <laughs> <laughs> we love that. Like, what are, what are you starting your day with? And it's, it goes right down to like, okay, so fragrance, even, you know, we started to talk a little bit okay. about essential oils and, yeah. and just because you start your day with that doesn't mean that, you know, after two, PM, your body's going to need the same thing. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's talk a little bit about um, application for, for people that might know a little or, or a lot or maybe nothing. Let's start with that horizon line. Okay. So let's say inside of any given day, you might be popping up into your upper realms and you're too much in your head and you're, you're too busy inside of that really, really high head vibration and the body's starting to suffer. 
or you start to drop too much into the earth and it's like now suddenly you've got lead boots on and you mm-hmm. you can't seem to get yourself you know through your day so let's talk about how the different ways that we can kind of bring this balance for people and the tools that they can be using so let's start out with the upper realms we're stuck too much in heart and above what should we be doing okay if you think of the um the chakras from the base of the body through to the crown of the head, um, working on the light spectrum, the colors of the rainbow. So working with the darkest colors at the base of the body, um, really dark in your black grounding stones um, into red and then moving upward in the in the rainbow. You Once you allow yourself to start to, to plug in, right? And, and go within and see, okay, well, I do feel like I need grounding, I need to be anchored, my like feet anchored my head. into the earth, yeah. then you would reach for your stones that, I mean, some of them like this hematite that Amy has here is actually so heavy. It's one of the most grounding stones and you feel the vibration, the energy of all of your darker grounding stones. They have a heavier, denser vi- energetic vibration within them. But if you think of, so you know, you need that, you know, you need to have with you stones, anxiety relief, that are grounding, what else could you do in that moment that you recognize, okay, I am, I need to let myself experience my physical being in a different way. You might even do something like take your shoes off and literally walk outside or just take your shoes off inside the house and do a grounding exercise where you are putting your energy back down into the lower chakras. And if you practice yoga, then you would work with your grounding postures. You'd work with your sense of like feeling stable in your body, work mountain pose, mountain pose, pose. and all of the poses that really help you feel strong and stable in the lower half of your body. You might need feel the need to walk to really use the muscles of the lower half of the body. So even this much um, mindfulness as far, as far as like, well, the energy, my everything is energy. My attention and my focus right now is going to be on the soles of my feet on grounding, maybe putting wood oils on the bottoms mm-hmm. of your feet and then grabbing your grounding stones to have on your body that as that tangible reminder that not only is this vibration now in your space, in your quantum field, right? The vibration of your darker, your heavier stones, mm-hmm. but also your, and I like that, you know, when you were, depending on how great the imbalance is, if you feel like you need to be there all day, you need to be grounding all day, then having your stones on you are going to be that reminder. Yeah, Yeah, and the bracelets are reminders of that. Things things that are able to, you know, go with you and be with you. People just buy crystals to have to grab in the car while they're driving if they have a stressful commute and be able to hold them at a light, you know, and just have have them in their area to remind as a reminder, as a mental reminder too to do those things. If you look at some of, for those of you who are going to watch this, some of the grounding stones, we have a piece of carnelian here and um, this fossilized palm root, which we just got in, which is from a tree in Indonesia. And it's so earthy and grounding. It actually has the black, the yin and the yang, the black and the white, um, to just remember that we're both, you know, good. And, good. Oh, no, okay. that's good. Uh, no, just, and you know, you look at these and they look like the earth. They look like yeah. the vibration that they are emitting. They look like grounding as opposed to something that's super, you know, white, light, high vibration of obviously more about your upper chakras. So when you put things like that side by side, you know, something that's pure white and something that looks like it can't, like it is just a piece of earth solidified in your hands, you understand or you start to understand part of this system of like letting your body return to that vibration. So like, I need grounding. So I'm going to go for my darker stones. I'm going to go for the, the tourmaline and obsidian and hematite and shungite and pyrite. All the darker stones. And and those are, I mean, it's like, I find too, there are some stones that like the one that you just showed the, that, the, the fossilized root or whatever. I mean, that's like the, the blend. I mean, this is what we go to in essential oils too, right? We look for the blends, mm-hmm. the things that have the combination of smells cool. that, that just feel good in the moment. So it's like, I know I need to be grounded, but I also need to feel motivated today. So you throw some citrine or some pyrite in there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, you know, I need to be grounded in my body, but I'm having a really hard time with my emotions today. So we pick up the carnelian, mm-hmm. um, you know, or like, I really or need the citrine. Yes. <laughs> motivation so that was the stone that you kept getting me to to like for my solar plexus for confidence and digestion 
you know, that having such digestive issues, that was my stone for, for me. And we have honey calcite and, and our bumblebee Jasper. I mean, I know that's your, that's, that's your, one of my faves. Yeah. That's just incredible. And yeah. just to bring joy into your life and sunshine and light so often, especially people who are workhorses of the Zodiac, you know, you're in your car or in your house or at your work, at your job or a grocery store, but are, when are you ever outside connected to nature and letting the sun hit your face and letting the joy of the beauty of the earth come to you and give you the natural energy that you need an infusion of sunshine. And some of these crystals remind you, you know, that you need to have that. You need to take breaks. You need to get the air and get out into nature. So that was a huge shift for me, for you to teach me that, Jenny. That was, and, you know, seeing about the citrine. She like, eat yellow foods and, and, you know, bring sunflowers into your house. That was like pretty mind blowing to say you can really sh change the energy in your day once you recognize it and you go, oh, wow, I'm having this emotion or I'm having this physical feeling. What tools do I have in my environment that can help me find some balance right now? You and, know, and the the horizon line like that this is where I'm finding myself I think more days than not now especially inside of my selections with my essential oils and my stones and this is interesting for me because green has never been a color that I've vibrated towards I, I just like it's not that I don't like green it's just mm -hmm. it's not what I choose I, I don't normally choose to put it on my body I don't normally choose those stones I just it for whatever reason I always feel like I need something else more and that mm -hmm. has not been true for me for I'd say about the last month I've been very drawn to the vibration of green which that brings us back to the horizon line right because that's mm -hmm. the heart now the heart does vibrate between you know we've got the heart and the high heart which are, you know, they, they sit right on top of each other. Um, and the high heart tends to be more of like the pinks, um, the, the self-love, you know, those kinds of things. Um, rose quartz. Yes, the rose quartz. The crocite. And that's where I, I kind of put the lapidolite there. Like that's where, mm -hmm. you know, even though it has so many dynamic colors inside of it, yeah. it's got that dusty rose, it's got purple, it's got white, it's got- It's um, got green too. It's, yeah, it's, it's got so, gray so and like it's got so many beautiful colors in it. Um, but that green and, and the, that's bloodstone. where, and yes, the bloodstone is one I've been very drawn to. It's really, really good for, um, spleen, adrenals, system. kidneys, like really cleaning out. Like, so on the Eastern medicine side, when we think about chi and like the movement of energy inside the body, the, <laughs> The kidneys are very much our chi center as far as our life force, right? But the mm -hmm. spleen is then in charge of all the fluids in the body, the, the life force that's inside the fluids. And how is it being transported through the body, mm -hmm. through our lymphatic fluids, through the blood, through, you know, all of those things. And so the bloodstone is one that I've been drawn to over and over again, because it's so purifying for mm -hmm. the life force inside the fluids in our body and cleaning right. it out. It it grounds, it anchors into the horizon. It does all of these amazing things. But I'm, I've also been drawn to like the lighter side of the realm as well, like the green calcites and, you know, those mm -hmm. kinds of stones um, that are more minty, I guess, or more aqua. Um, which, I mean, that's a link into the heart and the throat, right? So let's yeah. go, let's go above the horizon now, as far as like, what do we need to draw ourselves up out of the earth and go more into our divinity, um, more into those upper realms when we're feeling really heavy and we're feeling really tired? I think the, any of the blue stones, we have aquamarine in the shop, which we just can't keep in enough. Uh, we, we actually put together a set based on what we were talking about today for the adrenals of all the different stones that will help support the adrenals. But anything that's in the blues, the light blues, the clears, the uh, anything with some type of um, rainbow effect to it, like opalite, which is our tumbled stone of the week, opalite, it really helps get you up into the higher realms of your chakra system. Uh, it opens up communication lines for your spiritual growth. Your um, This is celestite, which connects you. It's just probably, I, I mean, I, I, I cried when I saw one of the celestites in the shop because it spoke so deeply to my soul because it's about finding your guides and connecting to the angelic realm. And that's so much of what my journey has been. And I get up so high and I want to learn about 
the psychic side of me. I've had astrologers tell me that I'm psychic and I can, you know, speak to all these other uh, dimensions. And, and that's what I'm nurturing. And this, this stone just spoke so clearly. That's what this does. The celestite connects you to your angels, to the, to the, your spirit guides and the, the realm above, you know, that, but, but ironically, I've since learned, it's not about going up. It's more about getting deep down into your solar plexus mm -hmm. and your heart mm -hmm. to connect with your divinity. It's not just third eye, third eye, third eye, which we've all been, you know, trained and accustomed to believe. Well, let's, so, do you have any of those new pieces of fluorite, like that gorgeous rainbow fluorite? I mean, this is yeah. one of, rainbow fluorite is one of my favorites because I, I automatically think of it, even though it's the quote unquote, the genius stone, I, the genius stone. I think of it as plugging you into your heart. Like, so it's a connection, like a geometric connection between the head space and the heart space. Um, so I love the rainbow fluorite for that reason, because the labradorite, for all intents and purposes, kind of does the same thing. You know, it is very much like an intuitive stone, but it plugs you into the, the green heart energy as well. But the labradorite for me is too strong because I have so much fire in my chart. And mm -hmm. so the the rainbow fluorite is so much cooler. Um, it, it's, yeah. it's vibration is cool. And so that's much better for me being a double Aries, you know, like I love the rainbow fluorite. Well, here are two pieces of rainbow fluorite um, that we have in the shop, but we did just load up yesterday for uh, the next quarter. So we just got some incredible pieces, Jenny. We sent you the pictures. It's they're stunning. So um, yeah, this is a great head and heart connector stone, and we the people just are blown away by the beauty of it. We have angels figurines that are made out of this. We have a plenitude of. of, of bounty of those oh, yeah. <laughs> they fly in and they fly out but it's it's something that people can have in their space and hold but also remind them to connect to themselves i think jenny brought up a, the best point is what i was thinking as we were starting to talk about the upper realm is that if because of the heart space being this gateway between the upper and the lower if you are really so rooted and their heart is blocked i feel like the connection above is going to be so difficult. And so something that can open the heart energy as you're trying to connect up is really the way to go. And again, this comes back to what we were saying from the very beginning, the more you, and you know, you get so um, deeply in tune with like how deeply you are dwelling on one end of the spectrum or the other, you know, sometimes we're just needing to wake up the upper chakras and you want to put like a big piece of like clear quartz on your head because that's what it feels <laughs> like you want to do because it's like I just need that clarity I need that opening but if you're if you're in a, a, a space that I think people really are kind of trapped in now in a, a state of like confusion um or uh, fear. fear and you know what is the opposite of of clarity um that the heart energy gets so blocked or gets so cloudy that the connection upward becomes not impossible it's never impossible but it feels so far away and so something like a fluorite where you're trying to in uh encompass the heart energy with the upper connection is perfect but also I feel like these are all tools to help facilitate like the, the self-study. So you can put all the crystals on your body all you want, but you also have to put some of your intention, your mindfulness, your meditation. They're, they're tools to help deepen those practices for mm -hmm. you. It's never like the pill. You know, you never want to run the risk of this becoming your new Xanax. Well, I don't feel good. I better go buy 4,000 crystals and put them all over my body. That's the tool to help you understand where you are and also to appreciate what God gave us in order to connect back in because sometimes we can't do it on our own. That's why it's all here. That's why we were you know, born into all of this landscape of the vibration of all of these things that match vibrations in our, in our, or in our space. So um, something that's really interesting um, during uh, in January, when we started doing the workshops, people were just coming in droves and let's do more, let's do more. We did a heart opening uh, workshop on Valentine's day. And we gridded everybody um, on their mats. She did a guided meditation. We had music and we did essential oil sprays and we gridded them with rose quartz and um, amethyst. Amethyst is a beautiful amethyst cluster. Um, it's the stone of intuition and to be able to help you know, you connect. And it works with all the chakras too because it's, it's just such an incredible um, stone that will help 
you trust yourself. And that's the biggest thing, I think, loving yourself, loving out to hu humanity and trusting yourself. These two stones are like the most plentiful on earth. They were provided for us, rose quartz and amethyst. There's so much, you see it everywhere. You see it at TJ Maxx, you see it at Home Goods. You know, these things are so bountiful because this is what the world needs to love themselves, to love one another, remove the, the, the disconnect and the separation that we're all experiencing and seeing and just get back to nature and realize that they have to trust themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think we both took that leap of faith, but we, during the COVID time period, when she had to shut down the studio, we just started giving Reiki to each other. And the crystals and the oils were the accessories to the Reiki. And we just, they brought us so much joy and happiness just because the beauty of this came from the earth. How did this, how did this come from the earth? I mean, it's just incredible. We just loved it. And then the, the Reiki combined with the crystals and, and the energy that we were giving each other created this new brainchild to open up this shop and become what we hope to be an epicenter of education and of learning, um, self-discovery, metaphysical healing, community, um, bringing people together, having a place for them to, to come that's that they can come and discover themselves. Like even with our Reiki, our Reiki sessions that we give, we're not, we're the healers and we're trying to feel, fix you. It's, we're helping you discover yourself, remove any blocks mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually that you may have the, like what you do Jenny with the energy, with the emotion code and the trapped emotions, helping re relieve the person of some of that energy that they've gotten so connected to and hold on to, whether it's their victim story or their, you know, <laughs> helping them recognize what they need to do to make the shifts. And here's a tool. What are you guided to? Here's an array of crystals. When we do the crystal Reiki healing here, what are you drawn to today? And that's so telling about what they're, where they're at at the moment. And what, if that could be a little tool that will help them make that little shift in those micro habits, like you said, to have you know little things during the day that you do that you start implementing that wow that made me feel good and i didn't need the glass of wine last night and i woke up my head was clear and i feel really good today those little shifts that we're trying to get people to recognize in themselves and empower themselves so that they can move forward with their true self and not what they've been maybe brainwashed to believe through whatever familial situation or community or social or the church or whatever, you know, it's, it's all, we're all one. Well, I think that we are, I mean, I think in our natural state, humans are, are curious and inquisitive. Um, but I do think that now more than ever, we are being pushed into that place of discovery, looking for new evidence, looking for true north, looking for really what we we resonate with inside of truth which might be a different kind of truth than we have ever considered and you know I think with more and more people asking why and trying to figure that out inside of themselves like why am I feeling this way why am I stuck you know what do I need and really starting to ask this question from a much more introspective place of that person is not making me happy anymore and being driven into a place of, I need to make myself happy. And I think there's a mm -hmm. lot more people discovering that now than ever and being able to have, I keep telling Roseanne and Amy, like the, the, the shop is becoming this, this new age local bazaar for all of these amazing things that are coming out of such gifted people as people are discovering their passions and discovering their gifts um, and applying it into man-made, handmade things from nature's resources. So, you know, like whether it be, um, and it, isn't it interesting how it all comes out of that sacral work, which is, you know, this is where it all Crazy, begins, yeah. like that, that, that real sense of identity and self that if we were taught early on, we would have been able to anchor into starting, you know, around seven or eight years old. And now we're all reverting back to inner child work, figuring out what makes us happy, how we get to play, mm -hmm. what's fun, what we're connecting with energetically. And then these beautiful creations are coming out of this space. And a lot of these things are finding their way into the crystal butterfly. Um, mm -hmm. 
And so it becomes this playground for all of the things that you said. And, you know, I don't want people to feel afraid, like, okay, I can't get there. Like it's, you know, like I, I know we can't gather or I don't feel comfortable going to a class or I don't feel comfortable shopping. All of those problems have been solved. You know, Amy and Roseanne have figured out ways for you to have virtual experiences to shop, for you to have online classes. You know, Simplicity is has been offering ongoing yoga classes through the entire year. So people can stay in touch with their practice and their and their ritual for health, you know, and all of these other uh, resources that they're offering have also become virtual. So I do encourage you to find them. There's a couple of different ways um, that you can find these two amazing women. Uh, we have the Simplicity Yoga website. Um, you can go there. There are links into events. There are links into the shop. You can go to amyipolito.rocks uh, website. She has all of her social media there. She has links to the shop. She has links to the events. You can find them um, on social media under the, the same handles. So you can find Simplicity. You can find Amy Ippolito Rocks. You can find the Crystal Butterfly. Um, and I would encourage you to go and start start um, getting connected and linking up because the opportunities to be a part of the ever-growing community are going to become more and more. You know, they're they're starting to, to put some new brainchilds together, think of new directions to go. Um, and so, you know, being on board so you'll be able to experience, especially the, the birth of the Ascension Sisters when, when that starts coming. Um, and, and, making sure that you're checking in on a daily basis because there's always new specials in the shop there you know there's new themes happening with all of the amazing yoga teachers that are part of the network at seraphim or at the, with the seraphim blueprint network at simplicity um and so there's there's all of these things that can be tapped into um without having to even leave the comfort of your home if you're not in a position to do that so i just wanted to say thank you um to both of you for taking the time uh to to be on the soul tribe saturday Day. Um, you certainly are the epitome of my soul tribe. And I know will other people that are searching for that will find that um, in the things that you're you are now providing on all levels of of ascension and self-discovery and healing. Did I miss anything? Is in any other um, ways that you you guys can be contacted that I missed? Any any closing thoughts before uh, we say goodbye and wish everybody well for their solar eclipse week? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're here for you. We just were so grateful to you, Jenny, Thank for you so much, yeah. having us and um, just being supportive to the, the studio and the the Crystal Butterfly Boutique. Uh, we do we are trying to create an online strong online presence because we want people to feel the connection even if they can't physically be here so we have crystals and coffee on sunday morning we're doing lives talk about comfort zone neither of us have any experience being on video on camera or anything like that and it's terrifying <laughs> and we're just like you know what we're just doing it and that it's going to be okay and we're safe and it's and it's, we did because the drive to want to connect with people and help them know that we're being vulnerable and they can be vulnerable too and when you lean into that vulnerability some pretty magical things happen so so we're just grateful for this platform and for your your ever-present guidance mm -hmm. and love and support we love you so much and we're grateful for it i love you guys too yeah, and i um i i love everything that came together today um inside of the conversations i hope that everybody's listening um that you all learned something new today or or got a new perspective um, because like what Roseanne was saying right now as we're clearing out our heart space you could hear the same thing 12 times and mm -hmm. until you're really clear you may not actually hear it you know it might not sink in um, so we encourage you to continue your search looking for voices that resonate messages that drop in finding that tribe um, finding those circles finding that community finding 
finding those methods of healing um, that work for you. And obviously we're all here as resources on your journey if you have questions or, or need support in that way. So thank you again, everybody for tuning in to Soul Speak with Jenny Israel for our Soul Tribe Saturday. We're wishing you lots of blessing and light and wonderful self-discoveries for this upcoming very illuminating week of the solar eclipse. Um, sending lots and lots of love to everyone. And thanks again to Amy and Roseanne. And we will see you all next time. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Your blessing. Thank you.